Fig fam. It is Friday and it's chilly. We are in the middle of an Arctic freeze. We have these dips in the jet stream that bring down cold Arctic air. And here in Wilmington, North Carolina, zone 8B, it can get pretty chilly and it can feel like places of the Northeast for, I don't know, one to two weeks a year. We're still warm enough to have hardy palm tree varieties grow here for zone 8B. We used to be 8A, but along the coast, we're definitely 8B here. And I did something really interesting, cool, and it worked, which was a huge win because it was an experiment to try to passively heat my greenhouse. And I filmed yesterday after we had a cold dip in the night, about 26 degrees. Normally my greenhouse has about a 15 degree difference with the space heater in it and the greenhouse itself with no additional protection. I had a 30 degree difference by applying insulation panels and by applying a greenhouse cover on top. And here it is. It's a little interesting looking <laughs> to say the least. But I wanna to go to the video now and show you guys how it worked out, how it came to be. You can see my excitement that it worked. And we'll go over what I did and how to keep my greenhouse warm with the two simple additions of panel insulation and this greenhouse cover on top of using the space heater that I already use. Fig fam, I don't have a mic. You guys can hear me okay. It's 27 out right now, right? My wife's filming, she's awesome. She's my number one fan. You guys can try, but she's my number one fan. I have the frost cloth on here, so I'm protecting all my winter greens. Shout out to Rish Gala. She can walk you through how to preserve all your winter garden stuff. But it's all snug under this frost cloth. I really wanna show you something that I spent a lot of hours last night doing by myself. I retrofitted a greenhouse cover on top of my greenhouse. Normally I get about a 15 degree differential, but what I did, we're gonna have to go underneath and show you what's under the hood of what I did. But on the outside, I have a greenhouse cover to reinforce insulation and increase the R value. So not only does it keep heat in, but today when the sun comes out and warms up, it'll still let solar potential in. So then, there's one other piece that worked in here. If you look, there's frost on everything, but here it's condensation. So first green flag that it's working. Remember, normally I get a 15 degree differential. You ready to come in and check it out? Okay, I left my coffee outside. But if you look around, we can film, maybe on a fisheye lens, also retrofitted with insulation panels and it goes around the base. The only heating elements I have in here is my Palma Bio Green heater that'll shut off at 70 and I have these heat mats that are kind of running full blast right now but it maintained a 30 degree difference. So normally 15 I've doubled it just by adding these insulating elements overnight. So I'm curious to see what it does even in the day. Normally it's 15 degrees. It got down to 26 last night. This morning I came out, it was 56 in here. Now we're at 27 degrees outside. And if you guys can see here, it's 57 degrees and you can feel it. The plumeria stayed safe. The pepper plants are still waking up. My fig cuttings are still waking up. That's a huge win because this was all a test. I didn't put insulation panels higher up. I just did it on the first four feet around the base here. But with these two elements, I was able to increase the inside temperature by another 15 degrees. So that's a 30 degree difference total from the outside ambient temp. We have this big Arctic blast right now. It's going to be 18 on Friday night into Saturday morning. And I did a huge test run last night. I was probably out here till 1130 the mm -hmm. things we do for our obsessions <laughs> and our loves and passions <laughs> but i am really pumped fig fam so if there's ways to supplement your heating in greenhouses or in garages 
insulation panels, greenhouse wrapping, just to double down, uh, it worked for me. And so I wanted to share that all with you. Have a great week, guys. Phil's Fig Friday is coming up. Tuning back to today on Phil's Fig Fridays, I want to talk about how cold tolerant figs are. A lot of times we have discussions in the fig world about which varieties can handle the coldest temperatures. Now, some varieties are more resilient than others and bounce back from that cold damage. And then there are still a few fig varieties that just can't handle hard, cold temperatures. So let's go over those different types of figs that do well in cooler climates. And let's go over those different strategies if you live in frigid cold climates. So hey, fig fam, I want to talk about how hardy fig trees actually are. Because they are deciduous trees. They do thrive in Mediterranean climates, which can get cold. There are varieties that people have grown unprotected as far north as New York City. And so I kind of want to do a breakdown because there are some varieties that are hardier than others. There are some varieties that are not that hardy. And there are some varieties that can surprise you. A few of the varieties that I grow actually are quite hardy in colder regions. Now, the collection that I have is actually an interesting gambit of figs, probably because I test all kinds of fig varieties here in the southeast coast of North Carolina in zone 8B. We get really hot, humid summers, and we have mild winters, but occasionally about one to two weeks a year, we'll have a cold spell that can go down into the high teens even, which we will see this weekend. Some of the hardiest varieties I grow that grow unprotected in Maryland, Pennsylvania, New York, Long Island. One of them is the Taramo. This one was discovered by Bill. Big shout out to Big Bill at Off the Beaten Path Nurseries in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. He has an amazing selection. I suggest checking out his website, offthebeatenpathnursery.com. He discovered this. It was brought over by an Italian immigrant in the Maryland area, I believe. Uh, it goes by Terramo or Teramo, uh, which is a village in Abruzzo, I believe. It is exceptionally hardy. It's in the shadiest spot of my yard. My yard faces south, and it gets lots of shade from these growing magnolia trees all year round. And it does okay here. I have never protected it. It's gotten down to the teens, and it's rebounded just fine. One of the fig trees on this list is my Brooklyn Park, which is a type of Mount Etna fig. Mount Etna figs are one of the earliest ripening figs you have and one of the cold hardiest. Anyone who grows on the East Coast or up towards Chicago, Mount Etna figs. Now, Mount Etna is a type of fig which is all based off of its club-shaped leaves. One of the most popular Mount Etna type figs is commonly known as Hardy Chicago. So if you have a hardy Chicago, it's a great fig for cold climates. Why? Because it survived in Chicago, which can get down to, I don't know, negative five degrees Fahrenheit. A few other great notable varieties that are Mount Etna type varieties have their own names. I've heard them as Almeria, if you see that going around. Marseille Black VS, that actually is a Mount Etna type fig. And right here, this Brooklyn Park JP is a Mount Etna fig. Uh, if you go looking for figs around cities and you're in a colder area, I've seen them in Pittsburgh too, it might be a Mount Etna fig. And they're noted by this club-shaped leaf. They will produce a lot of main crop fruit early in the year. And they do suffer dieback, and they will grow back as a bush for you every year. So if you live in a really cold region, you will see dieback, and they kind of grow back as a shrub every year and they fruit quite early on that new growth. So you'll see figs anywhere from August to September in colder areas, and you'll see it as early as July here in warmer climates. Another cold hardy fig that I suggest looking into is Long Doot. This fig, I hope I pronounced it right, makes giant braver crop figs, and it actually makes very large, delicious main crop figs. As you can see with this one, it looks quite small because I pruned the heck out of it because I sold a lot of these cuttings this year and I'm propagating a lot of this tree as well. Starting a plant nursery, I tend to really hack into my mother trees and that's the only downside is that I really pruned them back. As you can see, my other Mount Etna fig looked like a bunch of sticks, but it really grows well and bounces back easily and it's a high demand fig for those cooler climates. If you guys want to take a look here, you'll see that all my figs are not here. 
All the babies are in my hoop house, which I constructed, and it gets supplemental heat from what's going on in the greenhouse out to here. Since it's getting down to 18, all my potted figs that are normally here, I placed in my garage. And that's where they'll stay until the weather bounces back. There is a chance that they'll be fine out here in 18 degrees. I've seen it before, but I didn't want to risk it just because I have such a robust inventory of really great figs. And I don't know what their thresholds are yet. Negra de Agde is a relatively new tree for me, but it is known to be quite cold hardy and be quite resilient when exposed to cold weather all winter long and in those cold early spring days. Another fig that I have in a pot that is a mother tree is Ronde Bordeaux. It has nice finger-like leaves and it has a beautiful, delicious red fruit. And I'm a huge fan of Ronde Bordeaux. I think it's a great alternative to anybody who wants to try nice tasting figs that doesn't live in an ideal climate. I have been always impressed with it. It's an awesome fig and I have pruned so much of it <laughs> that I need to take a break and let it grow back and heal and turn into a robust mother tree. Uh, I think it's just gained popularity because of how great it tastes, how early it produces figs, and how cold hardy it is. Another fig that I wanted to cover that I also have in storage is Negrone. It's also known as Violet de Bordeaux, also known as Beers Black. All these are those dark Bordeaux figs. They're a little different than Ronde Bordeaux. They're a little more elongated, but they are also very cold hardy. I've seen these protected slightly and died back to the ground and come back every year in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. They seem to thrive uh, with new growth every year and grow in a shrub-like form like many uh, Mount Etna type figs like Hardy Chicago. I'm excited to promote a lot of those varieties because they look stunning and they also have more sharper finger-like leaves that look pretty in any garden or landscape. I've talked a lot about cold hardy dark figs and I haven't really covered a lot of light honey type figs or Adriatic figs that do well in the cold, but there are a few I want you to consider. There's one called the Paradiso fig. There are many versions of this before I delve into the one specific, but Paradiso Giovanni was highlighted probably a decade ago now in Philadelphia and it grows unprotected in zone 7a. That Paradiso Giovanni has its own characteristics and it apparently is delicious, has nice thick skin and the tree seems to just thrive in the protected city climate of Philadelphia. So for me here as a light fig, I have Stella that grows unprotected. As an Adriatic type fig, it makes huge elongated figs. And also I have Peter's honey. Peter's honey, I am not quite sure how hardy it can get, but I've heard really good reviews. I've heard of it growing as far north as the Jersey Shore. It is a great fig for me. I have pruned this one back far as well, but you can see how long I've had this tree for. And if you wanna look into having more of a honey type fig, with some minimal to no protection. Try looking to Peter's Honey, one Adriatic type figs, try looking to Stella, but there's also Paradiso Gene, which was discovered by Gene Hosey, who was a huge fig guy, who was one of the big fig influencers back when we read about all our information on figs. Gene found his Paradiso version growing out in Maryland, I believe, unprotected. I have that strain here. It is a delicious, beautiful looking fig. It makes brebas. If it dies back to the ground, it will grow with an established root system eight feet in a year. I've highlighted that before. This is all one year growth, guys. So rejuvenation pruning does work if you have an established root system. If it does get dieback, it will flourish and grow back from that root ball. So I would call this a very hardy fig because it can grow back year after year. So guys, that's a list of the hardy figs that I grow, but there are plenty of other hardy figs out there. I actually wanna know what types of figs you guys grow in colder regions, and if you have any recommendations for anyone else that wants to grow a hardy variety in a colder place. As always, reach out with questions, like, subscribe if you appreciate all this content. I'm happy to help you guys grow fig trees. And until next time, Take care, Fig Fam, and I look forward to growing with you.